Welcome to Ask the Accountant, the podcast that is made for you. Weekly podcast live Mondays from 8.30 a.m., released on the podcast service of your choice on Wednesdays. Your main weekly hosts, Aaron Patrick and Johan Gary. Got something to ask? Submit your questions below or ask during the show. Podcast loading. We are currently getting everything set up behind the scenes. So sit back, relax, and we will be with you in a few seconds. Enjoy. Good morning, everybody, and a very, very warm welcome to Ask the Accountant. Today is episode number 16, and it's the date is the 30th of January 2023. We got one day to go, haven't we? I'm not going to do the countdown this time round. I think you know everyone can everyone can count it down today, so we're absolutely fine. Uh, my name is Aaron Patrick, as always, and with me is my co-host Johan. Johan, how has your week been? Have you uh, been enjoying the January rush? Oh, I have. Yeah. Good morning. Um, yeah, I had a very good week last week. Lots going on. I was speaking at the uh, British Canoe Union's virtual conference. Uh, and- it was it? So you didn't get to go in any canoes. No, I didn't get, no. no. <laughs> For safety and insurance purposes, they wouldn't let me. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, and then I was away this weekend at a friend's for our annual catch-up, which is uh, 24 hours of just relaxing, catching up, plenty of whiskey and background music. So, uh, yeah, very nice, chilled weekend before tax return deadline, which is in 15 hours, 25 minutes and 19 seconds. Well, my mind, my light. Is it 15 hours? Is it 15 hours? <laughs> I don't think you put the right date in there, if I'm honest. <laughs> uh, until, oh, one day, 15 hours. <laughs> don't panic, everyone. You've got I can just imagine all our, all our listeners like, what's going on? <laughs> panic stations. <laughs> I mean, if you listen to this on the podcast, you've had it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is very true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you are listening to the podcast, I'm unlucky. Um, speaking of of uh, the January deadline, let's go through our topics of today because we've got a few January bits and pieces to bring in. So I thought we well, like let's start with a bit of feedback on on this year's uh, tax return season. What have we learned? What have our takeaways? And how, what takeaways have you guys got? Get in that comments below. Let us know if you know how it's been this year. What's happening? Anything that you've kind of found strange or or you want to share with the team? Let us know in the comments section. Um, then we're going to talk about how. Rico and Veeam on the show that how 24 hours on hold to HMRC and that's costing clients and practices. We'll just revisit that one quickly. Um, and then we're going to talk about, unfortunately, the first casualty of MTD. It's a going away and some vendor, uh, unfortunately, not with us anymore. And then we're going to finish the show on a bit of a, a hot topic, a hot take. Um, there's been a, a very popular vendor out there has released a uh, bit of a video about a chicken um, and we're going to review it live on the show and understand exactly uh, what we think of it so yeah we're gonna gonna bring that to the boil uh, pun intended uh, do you boil a chicken I suppose you do don't you you do well you boil the eggs don't you so you boil the eggs yeah um it was almost there. the advert aren't we that's what we're doing we're gonna do yeah. we're gonna roast the advert like you would a chicken very good. I love it. I love it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So let's just start with that one. <laughs> uh, so as I said, if you do have any questions, then please use that comment section. We've already got a couple of people in. So Paul, good morning. How's it going? Ashley there telling us we've got two days to go. Yeah, I'm sure you're really struggling with your uh, tax return le- deadline there, Ashley. So yeah, good, good. thanks for being here. Um, and um, and we've got it's uh, the, U- the US tax as well coming through there. So excellent. Right, let's go with that first topic then, and let's have some feedback from this year's returns. I've got a few kind of notes, my end of, um, let's just say, you know, frustrations I've had this year. What about you then, Joanne? Do you want to start us off? What have you kind of, what's your feedback this year? Has has it been your end? Um, I know you've had a few kind of hot takes on taking over or leave it or people leaving it to the last minute, and do you take those clients on or not? But what, what's what's been your overall take? Yeah, I mean, overall, I think... I couldn't be prouder of the team at the moment. We increased the number of tax returns we're doing this year by 62.5% compared to last year. And we're further ahead now than we were this time last year. 
So the team have absolutely smashed it. Um, really pleased with that. Um, we were doing really well between April and July of getting proactive and getting tax returns in and filed and encouraging clients. Uh, we then made an acquisition in August of Mind Your Assets, and then that sidetracked myself and my key management team to deal with that and get that all on board. And what we have realized come December is actually we never refocused or maintained any focus on tax pushing. Um, so, yeah, lesson learned this year is we're going to have someone that's going to be responsible for tax return deadlines and nothing like they will have other responsibilities, but big things like acquisitions won't sit on their radar so that they haven't got to worry about being distracted, basically. Right. Uh, but, yeah, just having a proactive approach, constantly constant visibility, practice management software has been key for me. Like, you know, I know when I went home on Friday, we had, like, I think two tax returns being processed. We're still waiting to hear back from people we've worked for in the past for about 25 and we had 30 out for signing. I've come in this morning. I can see 10 of those 30 are signed. Like, I've, I've got visibility, so I'm not stressing about it. I'm not worried. And I know how many emails and phone calls we've put into the people that haven't, we haven't heard from yet. And we know they're just annual clients that may come back, they may not. Um, a lot of them were people that were just doing self-assessment during COVID. That They just did a bit of a secondary income gig along with their furlough so we're kind of expecting them not to reply and not to come back to us but we didn't want to just ignore them um so yeah it i think my key takeaway is maintaining that focus from the fit so for april onwards mm -hmm. and also just making sure you've got complete visibility in your practice management software so you you can just have a dashboard that shows you this is where the statuses are for each one and we've also got our little countdown widget at the bottom. So we know where we are throughout the year. So last year, I think we wanted to have, I can't remember actually, we wanted to average X amount a week of tax returns. So up until August, we were very much, oh yeah, we're smashing this, we're doing this, like because we could see our progress on a weekly basis. Um, but then after August, we just took our eye off the ball. Um, but yeah. The focus and visibility of your workload, they're my two key takeaways. What about yours, Aaron? No, I love those. And I, and I got to mimic, I mean, we spoke about it before, especially in the last week, about the fact that practice management is so key. Um, and we even had uh, Chris, didn't we, tell us on, we have yep. all friends how important well, that was his key takeaway. And it's so true. Like, this year has been such an eye-opener for me. And, you know, and it, it's more that smaller practice of mine. Like, that's the one where I've struggled at this year. That's the one where I've had the most pain. Um, and it is just lack of a practice management solution. You know, I've outgrown an Excel spreadsheet. It's as simple as that. And and for me to, to open my eyes and see that is, is, you know, I should have done that a long, long time ago because in, my, in Boffix, it, it was always a case of we were, you know, um, practice management from day one and we've never had these issues. We've never had to have this this mad rush of actually how many tax returns have I got to file, you know, having to sit down and compile a list from HMRC sort of thing. It's like you said, that visibility is so important and it just gives you that focus from day one. Um, I think my other takeaway this year is like technology is really starting to help more than ever. Um, this year we've, we've, we've been so much more proactive in the Boffix side of things because we've been able to use automations of chasing clients. We've been able to make sure we know when clients are, filling in the information they need to. We can push back at them a little bit as well, because if they haven't provided us with their checklist, well, that's why their, ta their tax return hasn't been done yet. It's, a, you know, it's a really straightforward process that everyone knows. And that means that clients understand. They go, oh yeah, no, I, I keep seeing these reminders. I've just not got around to it. Yeah, I'll get them done. They provide the information and they get their tax return. You know, there's a process, there's no, you know, it, it's not that we're holding, you know, because of, of capacity, we're holding it back because we just don't have that information yet. Um, being able to click a button and 80% of the time, <laughs> I wish it was more, but 80% of the time, their P60s and P11Ds just appear on the system for us. You know, that used to be, uh, this time of year, we used to be chasing clients where that's all they need. They just need to provide us a P60 and we could get their tax return done. Now it's already there. We've already been able to process it and they're already ready to go. So, you know, technology's made a huge, huge benefit to us. One 
frustrating part of this year, though, that we found. And I think it's just because people aren't talking about it anymore and it's la- less of a you know buzzword. And that's crypto. Like it was almost quote unquote sexy, wasn't it, this time last year to talk about crypto and bring that into the fold. The amount of clients that have just got to the end and like we've just said to them, just Bear in mind that you had cryptocurrency last year, and we we were we, you know we were doing some capital capital gains for you and everything else. And this time they turn around and go, oh yeah. Now most of the time is because now they're in a loss making position. They're not as you know there's probably less risk involved, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. But it is worthwhile to kind of just prod them and talk about them. And the amount of clients that have just come back to and says, oh yeah, there was that little bit of crypto that I dealt with. 750 lines later of uh, extraction of <laughs> from their software and it's like you know that's what's been taking up the time that's been our last minute quite quite rush this year it's just been piling through those sort of things and getting them done and again technology can help but sometimes you know when it's just a one-off thing that you know they're not going to be worrying about this time next year then it's just a case of putting it through excel and, and doing a bit of pivot table and you know going the old, old-fashioned way if you like to get it sorted but I, it have seen more than more than my fair share of people kind of leaving it to the last minute with those or, or completely forgetting and, and not even worrying about the crypto side of things um which has been interesting to see but that's the benefit of using accounting software like kpm or tax filer isn't it yeah. If it's the second time this client's done a tax return with you, their softwares prompt you and say, well, these are the sections you filled out last year. And it may, you go, oh, yeah, we did do a <laughs> Hang on a minute. <laughs> like, yeah, and we, we had it the other week where we said, um, you had a small self uh, a small employed job last year. Have you still got that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I have. Here you go. <laughs> it's like, right, come on. Um, but, yeah, it's... It's an ongoing challenge. It is. It is an ongoing challenge. But it is one of those, I think, for whatever reason, you know, people just aren't talking about it as much. And it's not in the forefront. And it's been such a surprise to people to go, oh, yeah, that, that's one. And then the other one that's happened this year, it's um, kind of a bit to what you were saying, but there's been more free advice than ever before. Um, like clients just booking in for a little call and just having this conversation maybe this time last year. And then they think that they can just do it again this year. And I don't know what I don't know if it's because we're so kind of publicly focused these days, you know, with YouTube and everything else, but we're just getting more and more of these people who are just booking it in. And and it, it's really it's really weird that people kind of kind of think that that's OK. And it's having to have those awkward conversations go, look, we had this conversation last time, you know, even if you just buy a license off us or something, you know, be a, you know, be part of the Boffix ecosystem. We can have these continued chats with you and, you know, we can help you. But, you know, at the same time, we have to, like, we have to draw a line. We can't just give away free advice all the time. And I've just seen that as a bit of a downside, really, of the kind of um, being so much forward facing than we've ever been before. We've kind of encouraged these people to, to book in and we've yet to find a, you know, a solution where we're not offending people but at the same time we're, we're protecting our you know our stance on it as well so we're looking into ways in which we can you know maybe put a, a fee up front for certain phone calls and certain calls and stuff if they are just you know we know that they're just going to be a a person who's, who's not any intention of joining us they just want some advice then how mm-hmm. do we monetize that and push that forward so that's been our other kind of big takeaway from that if you, you kind of come across it is it something that's been a problem your end yeah i mean I had a few calls last week where people booked in and like they wanted to know if they needed to do a tax return. Yeah. yeah. It's like, you know, most of them were done in five minutes. Like, no, you've got until this point because when you started, blah, blah, blah. Um, And then one guy wasn't sure. And then I said to it, we went through it. And he's like, yes, you do. And he went, all oh, right. Well, I used to do it on the self on the website a few years ago, but I'm back being self-employed again after a while. Mm. I've got this employment. Does that make it more difficult? I said no. Just tick the right box. Tick the right questions. Yes, on H. Like I can do it for you, but like there's no real point. Like you can do it yourself. Um, to which he walked away a happy man. So, um, yeah. but yeah, we do get those clients that you know. It's the main one we've seen is clients that are paying for a tax return. And then think that includes all the bookkeeping. Yes. Yeah. And it's like, no. Uh, or they make a complete and utter mess of their bookkeeping. Then they're surprised when we go back to them saying, look, A, you need to redo this. B, going forwards, if this is how you're going to present your information, this is the fee. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, we 
we have got a bit more we have got we've certainly got stricter on our scope creep when it comes to tax returns and the bookkeeping element of it because a lot of people are coming to us and thinking it includes everything and it's like no you've uh, <laughs> you, you're getting too big now for us to do your bookkeeping as a freebie <laughs> so yeah yeah and it is it's awkward isn't it to have those comments especially when you did it maybe the first year and you know you yeah. did it as a favor to them and it, it it's very difficult to to make sure that they understand that that was a one-off and having that conversation yeah. but it has to be done and, and if not then you're going to end up with a a very difficult january because all you ended up doing is cleaning up work that you know either you know proactively if you've helped the client they would have cleaned it up for them or you've just not had that conversation with them to, to make it aware um i also think like especially this year like what you're saying there about helping people for the first time absolutely fine and i'm, I'm always going to be able to and we're trying to encourage ways in which we can make it so that clients can get in touch with us a lot easier you know not just a traditional phone call, but let's let's look at other ways. Let's look at WhatsApp and, and Facebook and all these other ways in which we can make it so it's easier to have those conversations with clients to try and encourage them. Um, but it's when it's 12 months on and they're asking the same questions again. And, you know, that's the bit that I'm struggling to find that solution for. Um, and unfortunately for us, it's been a lot of it this year and, and there's been a lot of those. And, you know, it's finding ways and, and finding solutions to go through there. But hopefully we can find the right solutions. Tim Works is bringing out a chat API powered bot for its users. Yeah. So one of the things we get a lot of, as you probably, even though you put the information in the email and, or on the breakdown sheet on top. So, so how much do I have to pay HMRC? And how do I pay it? And how do I pay HMRC? So they did a demonstration video where they typed in, how do I pay my self-assessment tax return to HMRC? And it pulled through the information and told them how to do it. And it's like that, just those seconds saved, based on the amount of pain we've had of it in the last three or four weeks, yeah. would be huge. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's well, that would be interesting to see how that goes with Chat API powering Timworks's uh, bot. Ah, I like it. I like it a lot. I mean, they're the sort of solutions that we need to start embracing, isn't it? With, you know, especially when MTD it's about, does ever finally come out of the woodwork and starts being a real thing, then, you know, that we're going to need these to kind of help those smaller clients. Um, yep. Let's just go back to chat, though. So John's up. I'm out of bed early. Well done. I'm well, glad that you've uh, been able to come and join us. We really appreciate it. The best thing since sliced bread, well, being tax season for me, it's got to be the fact that, um, HMRC's API is actually working this year, isn't it? And we can, like I just said, bring those P60s in. It's absolutely changed the game for us. What about you, Jan? Have you got anything that you think is the best thing since sliced bread? I, I'll give John a, I'll give John a helping hand here. Probably Digi Tools for an Accrual World podcast. Fantastic mm. podcast. <laughs> um, um, no, I mean, I just, yeah, just the amount of automation that's out there, like, and softwares that have got the business a uh, uh, firm owners back so like we use kpm for tax filing and it's all too easy just to hit submit for a tax return and never look at it again and then realize last minute it failed whereas kpm's support team have been brilliant they keep emailing saying this one's failed and that one's failed or whatever it is now nine out of ten times it's because i've got a bit click happy and press file and press that button twice within seconds and it's created a duplicate filing but the fact that softwares have got your back and there's a huge amount of value in these smaller softwares like you know you've got all your big softwares that are tackling how to go onto the cloud or how to be mtd it's a ready or whatever it is and then you've got the small guys that are going well how can we use chat api the latest trend to power our software and make things better. You know, how could you imagine a big, I don't know, tax calc or Iris or Sage sat there monitoring whether your tax return submissions are failing and then notifying you of it? Like sometimes playing with the smaller players has got real hidden value that you just do not take appreciation of until they do it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I mean, with that with that KPM thing, they ran me twice today um, while we've been in this. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know which one as well because I was filing one last night and it failed. So, 
yeah, they're ringing to say, look, this has failed. And, you know, I know it's failed. I, you know, I, I'm on top of it. But if I'd have just clicked it blindly and just walked away from it, I would, I'd, I'd be under the impression everything's done and dusted, wouldn't I? So, yep. yeah. And it was my own tax return. So I am very much in <laughs> I want to make sure that's done and <laughs> completed. Uh, Bev's here as well. So, hello, Bev. We're best. Uh, I was going to make a, a statement on Iris being a bit uh, back. Uh, uh, a bit out of date, but yeah, we'll uh, we'll keep that to one side. Um, and Paul says the following: Lots of time last week, I've been explaining payment on account. So many of the first oh. time while helping people pay tax or apply their government gateway or tax conditional code. You know what? This year, and and it is back in this year, isn't it? If you think about it, because we had that drop because of COVID, where people weren't earning as much. Then they're going back in, and we are in to almost reinvent the whip, not or, or relearn clients or re-explain to clients exactly what payment account is because they've fallen out of it. It's become a big shock to them to come back in. So yeah. he's absolutely right. I mean, the amount of times we've had to send that video that we do of explaining payment account has been constant. And you know, I've always been a little bit nervous about do you just send it does it almost seem arrogant that you're just sending a video instead of spending your time just explaining it but ultimately from from especially from our clients most of the reason they're with us is because they've seen us on youtube at one point anyway so actually them getting a video of look here's an explainer any problems book in with us and let's have a proper chat with it but here's an explainer of how it is that they they actually really appreciate that because they can sit back look at it watch it and and hopefully understand it from there but yeah paul you're absolutely right this year, uh, payment account's been an absolute um, nightmare to kind of kind of get get people's heads around again, hasn't it? It's um, also reminding the team that the last couple of years have been a bit funny. So <clears throat> we always compare last year's and this year's tax bills and go, mm-hmm. "Are we happy? That's about right." Yeah, you know, based on what we know about the client. But actually, I've been saying to the guys, "No, we need to compare it to the last for to the tax bill three years ago." Because that's the last time we had a like for like trading scenario. You know, the previous two years have been COVID hit, like you can't rely on it as a guiding light. So you need to compare it to the last few years instead of just the one and just make sure it's right. Yeah, definitely. 100%. And, and, and you know, with software again, with it being so straightforward, it, it's so easy to do that these days, isn't it? And mm-hmm. maybe that's, yeah, if anyone's listening, maybe that's where they could actually absolutely win. Why haven't we got a profit and loss comparison esque tax return SA three hundred two kind of view? How cool would that be to have it all in one? You know, have the opportunity yeah. to have each year go there and spot any gaps or anything that's coming through. Um, also, Paul says we use the email template for most chatbot would help, but it doesn't stop the calls or pop ins. It certainly doesn't, um, and and you know, it's how aggressive you want to be with that. You know, we we to kind of help with our call handling-esque approach we we do outsource call handling and you know it you know being remote that's the only way we could do it um but we have to be very upfront with clients that if you want to talk with us the best way to do is book a chat with us and use these links to book a chat um and then you know as long as you're up front with the clients and you're explaining to them that's going to be the best way the call is always going to be there in one way or another you'll get through to us but it won't be as efficient as booking a call in up front and having that pre predefined yeah. one um, is that and, similar sort of approach to what you guys do? Yeah, that. So we we answer our own calls, but um, our t- like the admin who takes the calls will say, "Look, he's busy. I'll get him to call you back." But actually, you're better off booking a call in using the link yeah. because the chances are he'll try and call you back, and you're then busy. Then you're going to call back, and he's busy. Like we're wasting everyone's time. Just book a t- call when because those date those times in that diary are free. Book a call when you're going to be free, and we'll do it. It just saves everyone's time. Exactly, and and especially during these busy times, like we spend, you know, part of our morning when we're doing our um, work in progress meeting or our daily roundup meeting, where we're actually talking to the whole team and we have a bit of a get together half an hour to understand what's going on, on on teams. And part of that time is we check to make sure that we are available. So we go through and look, look publicly looking, how do we look, you know, have we got slots for people and everything else? So yeah. there's that element of admin side of things. And, you know, you've also got to be very, very careful of your own calendar and make sure you're booking out time so that you don't double book or whatever it's going to be. But once you get over that and, 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 and you look at it, clients actually prefer it more because they 
know that you know at this point we're going to be talking about them and we've got their full attention for that half an hour hour whatever it's going to be we've prepared beforehand they're not we're not umming and ah in oh uh, yeah because right, uh, we've got it all prepped like you know yeah. you give yourself 15 minutes before each call just to get open even if it's just their last year's tax return or whatever it's going to be just so you've got a bit of substance for that meeting um it completely changes the game and i highly recommend if anyone's not doing that please you know look at solutions to get yourself a, an external calendar booking system and just pass it out there and, and 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 give it a go because it completely changed the way that we deal with clients and yes there are a few clients that you know still prefer a good phone call here and there but you can put that as a solution like you can have and give them the option to call back it doesn't have to be on just teams or zoom or whatever they're doing and yeah it works it works really well um two other people chatted so we've got morning to uh, lillian good morning lillian and then um uh, we're talking about scope of outsource work from uk in india so yeah i'm sure that's been very topical for tax return season this year any more feedback you've got from this year's tax returns or should we move on to the next topic there yeah no, I think it's just my overall overriding advice is, look, no one's ever got this right. No one will ever get it right. Uh, there'll always be room for improvement. Um, and, you know, we're, I've certainly got plan, days planned in the next few weeks where, so I'm, I'm down at QuickBooks next week in London. That gives me four hours before the meeting, four hours after the meeting on a train where I'm just going to be able to put my headphones in and focus on, breaking down what we did, what went well, what didn't go well, and coming up with plans of how we solve the bits that didn't go well and how we continue things that did go well. Um, so, yeah, I would just, t whatever you do, take some time out, whether that's going for a walk, whether that's sitting on a train for four hours, whatever you need to do, uh, just to reflect back on how the last nine months have been and what you can do to go forwards um, to make sure it's the best for you and, the, and it improves on the previous year, next year. Yeah, great bit of advice. Eh? Great bit of advice. And yeah, and, and maybe put a podcast or two while you're uh, while you're listening to the on the train as well. Yeah, you know, you know listen back to this podcast while you're on the train, this and one? it will remind you to then start making some notes and reflect on things. Saving each practice one one podcast at a time. Uh, Paul also says, I used to use Square Appointments, but recently switched to MS Bookings. Yeah, we'll be on that one. Uh, the only downside of MS Bookings, though, um, the Microsoft Bookings, for people not aware, is that we can't monetize it. Um, whereas Square Bookings, we did have that option. So, yeah, it's a bit of kind of catch-22, but, yeah, they were, they, they're coming forward. Um, we've got a really quick topic, but it's kind of got into the public domain here. So on the Telegraph of all places, they were talking about how HMRC, uh, and their, their headline is HMRC has uh, spent 24 hours on hold, uh, a particular person was reporting um, on there. Unfortunately, I can't read the rest of it because uh, I have to pay for their subscription. But, you know, let's just go by what their title says and go from there. But as a follow-up topic... Oh, click pay. Here we go. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Uh, but on follow-up topic, Accounts the Age talks about how the HMRC's call handling and the fact that they've got 24 hours away. I imagine you could just book an appointment with HMRC, you know? Yeah. Yeah, imagine you just went in, booked your slot, they followed you back. Everyone would be happy, wouldn't they? <clears throat> but as the 31st of January deadline looms, accounting firms face increased workload as HMRC customer service delays persist. persist. And yeah, if a client is being told it's 24 hours that they've got to sit there on the phone for, unlikely they're going to help us and actually go and call the HMRC on our behalf, isn't it? Um, which means that we're going to have to spend the X amount of time, 45 minutes plus, we're going to be sat on the phone call. Um, yeah. trying to trying to solve issues and you know there's no easy solution for this but there has to, hmrc has to be taking this as a year where they go you know what we drop the ball we're not helping people you know i, I get this whole impression where <clears throat> and i do appreciate it on the call now it's very much a case of look if you're just looking for a p60 or a p11d then please or in fact, in fact they're even telling us aren't they we will not give you this information at this point you will have to go online and you're going to have to do that and you know, for ninety percent of the clients, that's absolutely fine. I'm more than happy to do that. It encourages clients to get their digital account up and running. Most of the time, we can just get that for them for nowadays using the API links and using software to extract that information. So we're we're helping client we're helping HMRC take the pressure off by using technology and, and using 
uh, the, the the opportunity to do that. But every now and again, we're going to be in a position where that's not going to be available. You know, if we've got someone who's never used the internet before, whatever it's going to be, you know, we've got to be able to help them as well. So yeah, they, they've got to realise this year that they, that especially for the accountants that are just trying to help, like we're we're just trying to take workload off there so we don't want to be on the phone for 45 minutes like there's got to be a better way for us to do it so yeah what, what i mean you've had personal experience this year haven't you which you talked about yeah. a couple of episodes ago yeah i mean the the wait times are just phenomenal at the moment but what's even more annoying is the time so i can i've got a team member who spent three lots of 45 minutes on hold to hmrc to get through and a client rings me and says, oh, I've just spoke to HMRC. And I said, oh, how long were you on hold? Oh, it went straight through. So hang on a minute. <laughs> it make, starts making you wonder, are we blacklisted? <laughs> you know, do they know, oh, these guys are accountants, they can wait. We're just going to deal with the taxpayers as best we can. That number's registered somewhere. Now, that would imply HMRC have got software. <laughs> That's quite powerful somewhere. Yeah. Uh, whether they have or not is a very different matter. I mean, they can't take callback bookings, so probably not. Um, but, yeah, it's just... That chance call of that client getting through, and I was saying we are trying HMRC, we can't get. Well, I just got through. It's like great. That makes us look like idiots. Um. So well, your, question, your question was: It HMRC got through to? It? Was it some sort of scam line that he? Oh well, yeah. That's I mean, the worry, isn't it? What would be really helpful from HMRC, and based on what we have as software is available these days, I don't see why they shouldn't be able to do this. Is that it, they have a, a graph that shows how busy they are at, on the phone lines at any time on their website. So when you when you watch any of these documentaries about ambulances or police and call centres, you know, we've got these big screens that are saying we've got this amount of calls on hold, we've got this amount, this is the average response time, this is the amount of time we're spending on each call. If they could display that information for us on the HMRC website, then we wouldn't be calling when they've got their peak amount of, you know, if they've got 100 people on hold, we're not going to call. Mm, exactly. If we see that then drop off to 10, we're going to get into that queue. So having that visibility of information would be amazing. Um, but I I can't see HMRC ever doing that, um, unfortunately. Um, but it would make life a lot easier. Oh, it would. It certainly would. And uh, uh, we've got a funny story from um, back in the day. We're wet behind the ears of how we helped HMRC with their call handling. Um, we were playing around with um, Google Analytics, and well, Google AdWords and stuff, and we were pushing it through um, through Google and trying to be top of the search rankings and everything else. And somehow, don't know how we did it, but we ended up being above HMRC in, in taking phone calls in terms of uh, helping you do your tax codes. So suddenly our phones were absolutely lit up of people trying to just change their tax codes. As they were calling us. So that helped out to RC for a few, it cost us a lot of money and uh, we got ultimately nowhere with it. But yeah, that's a, that's a solution that um, HMRC might want to look at in the future, incentivizing accountants just to, uh, just to do the work for them. But yeah, yeah, let oh, them learn on that one. <laughs> what are you doing your own SEO? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah well, there's your first lesson. Don't do it yourself. Never do your own. Yeah, exactly. Um, we were also fighting with um, QuickBooks on uh, trying to be above them and then realising that they were also pushing us anyway. So, yeah, it was a chicken and egg scenario that, uh, yeah, didn't go right for anyone. But anyway, yeah, the things you learn at the very beginning. Um, next one. Unfortunately, we have some bad news to talk about here, and that is that we've had our first casualty in the world of MTD. So, so this is from the great people at Accounting Web, and they've reported that tax sheets become the first MTD. It's a software casualty. So the ripple effects of making tax digital for income tax lay have now spread to the software world. We knew this was coming, didn't we, unfortunately? Yeah, um, yeah it's first of however many it's going to be, unfortunately. Um, and this is not good at all. But this is what HMRC kind of probably knew and probably expected um, when they kind of made their decision. Um, and yeah, it's it's one of those. I think what it means for us, though, is those softwares that you've just said who are trying, they are coming out there. We've got to support them, and we have accountants. We've got to try and push them as much as possible, even if, you know, maybe their solution isn't quite for now, it's for the future. Well, we need to find ways to make it more attractive to clients now 
you know, things like Hammock, for example, like, yes, they they are not as needed as they should have been at this time of, of, of its lifestyle, life cycle, but we know how much good it can do for our clients. So let's keep pushing them and let's keep pushing the best in service. If anything, it makes us look better as accountants because we're, we're pushing the best software to help clients and, and, and help them going forward. It's that kind of business advisory-esque mode, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. I mean, if if tax sheets shows us anything, it's the danger of niching too far. Mm. Um, you know, like Hammock. Hammock is a fantastic solution regardless of MTD itza. Hammock is a brilliantly powerful solution for any landlords, uh, especially if they've got multiple properties. Even more so if those multiple properties are in various different legal setups for businesses. So they've got a huge uh, pain point resolved for the landlord industry, regardless of whether they need to be MTD registered or not. The benefit of Hammock is multiple, and we should be pushing it anyway. Exactly. And it helps us digitalize that industry very, very well. Tax Sheets was targeting the smaller tax return people via yeah. MTD ITSA. And as soon as HMRC turned around and said, we don't need you to do it if you've got under £30,000 turnover, Tax Sheets was dead in the water. They'd over, like, they've got no other, they aren't a solution for anything else. That was their one egg and they dropped it. Whereas hopefully, Others like, you know, QuickBooks, Zero and Sage, obviously they're not going to be seeing the growth they're expecting, but they're not going to be damaged too much by this because they've got so many different solutions mm. and they solve so many different problems, as Hammock do. Um, but anyone that was just building a solution just to get you, f take your spreadsheet and file it to MTD through an ITSA approved process, which would only be the smaller turnovers anyway, so the majority of those people have now been discounted from the onboarding process due in 2027. So, and their tool wasn't needed now until 2026 at the earliest. Um, so yeah, it, it's not a surprise they've gone under straight away and they're the first. <clears throat> I think we're going to see a few more unless they can pivot and do it very quickly and explain to the market how they're going to solve other solutions other than just this one thing yeah completely but it's what do they pivot to like you know like you were saying with tax sheets unfortunately they went so niche that why else that there was nothing else that they could pivot to like they were basically living on the fact that there was going to be a compliance reason that people would need to use this piece of software um and unfortunately that's not there is it so um, you can't bank on hmrc to take a call never mind yeah, exactly. Not exactly. change their mind. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Completely right. Completely right. Um, and yeah, it, it's a shame. Um, I, I remember seeing kind of like a demo of the software. It was impressive what it, you know, what it was. It ended it was an Excel spreadsheet, it's kind of S, but it was, you know, it was impressive for what it could do. And, and there was going to be use cases for it. You know, the reason MTD it so was kind of delayed was because of those those problematic situations, like you know, you know, you're um your, your farmers of the world and things like that that we still haven't got a wholesale solution for have we so yeah fingers crossed that um that we don't see too many more casualties and that there are abilities to to pivot or as i've said before you know as accountants we've probably got to take a bit of ownership of this and we've got to help push software i know there's this argument that as accountants we've become more of a, a you know selling organization and we've become sellers and that's you know there was a whole argument wasn't there about how we feel like or accountants are feeling like all we're doing is pushing software down clients' throats these days. But that's part of the business advisory moniker, isn't it? That's what we've got to see it as. Like we're looking at ways in which we can help clients and make it so that they can grow. And I think ultimately that's what we've got to, to take on board. And, and we've got to find cool pieces of software that's going to help clients help us as well. Great. But yeah, we've got to, we've got to be more proactive in that sort of world. So yeah, I think hopefully it's also a waking up for us as accountants at the same time. Definitely. Awesome. Okay. Um, right. So a little bit of a thingy topic this one. So there's been a an, an advert that's come out onto our uh, onto our ecosystem about chickens. Um, so 
people be wondering out there why chickens have got anything to do with us accountants but you know i don't know i think i think there's a big big uh, big need for this video um okay let me give me 20 seconds to do a bit of technical jiggery pokery and let me actually show it on screen because i actually think um i actually think it's quite a nice little uh, video but i know uh johan's got a different approach to it so yeah just give me a thumbs up if you can hear this in a moment i mean i don't want to hear it again Oh, no, I can't hear that. One day this will work, first time, every time. Let me just do one more thing. This is what happens when you work with amateurs. And All the gear, no that idea. Hear it. Nope. No. No, you can't hear a thing. <laughs> well, that bit didn't work as according to plan. Um, okay. We'll uh, we'll tell you what's going on on it then. We're going to have to do it that way around as technology technology has completely failed me, unfortunately. Um, but do you want to let's let's just talk it through? Now I can hear it. And... <laughs> 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 oh, uh, you know what? Actually, could that work? No. <laughs> no. no. Never mind. All right. Ah, all right, let me turn this down and we'll just talk about it. Anyway, there's a video out there at the moment from, from QuickBox and it's about a chicken, or, well, a, a cafe, isn't it? And the cafe is doing a load of eggs. They've got final reminders and a chicken turns up to the cafe and the cafe itself, well, is uh, owner's not very happy because his chickens are in and um, then she gets upset, but she wakes up from a dream and QuickBox is there. Kind of sums it up, isn't it? I mean, yeah. <laughs> nice um, it, but yeah. Basically, cafe owners stress that she's behind on paying her bills, and that her suppliers are going to come and want their bills paid. And she's cooking eggs, so the suppliers are chickens. So chickens walk into this cafe, and she gets concerned. And then QuickBooks saves the day because she's actually on top of all the bills because she was using QuickBooks. I mean, I couldn't work out how they dreamt this up. But actually, this morning, it came to me. I think they were given a brief. Right. They gave someone a brief. Go and do, go come up with an advert. I think that person went home. And they sat with their young family and watched the Pixar movie B, where the bees right. revolt about uh, humans using their honey. Um, and then they thought, well, chickens, cafe, eggs. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's the only thing I can think of. This is a UK advert for the U advert for QuickBooks's UK campaign. Yeah, I would argue the cafe looks extremely American diner like. It doesn't look like a cafe I've been into in the UK. Interesting point. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I, I'm not not convinced that. This, yeah. I don't know what's more irritating, this one or the small people one, if I'm honest. Oh, now, that is a hot take. Now, I am a little bit concerned about our podcast people, uh, podcast friends who are just listening in. So you might just want to try and find this video just so you can get some context. But it's called Get, get, oh, get Peace of Mind, Get QuickBooks, and it's on the QuickBooks UK's uh, official YouTube channel. So that would be the place to, to find it. But that is a very hot it take that you think this is um, this is – on par with the last video. But yeah, carry on, and what were you about to say? I almost think these style of video, these style of adverts that are... So this was broadcast for the first time on TV during the Man City game. Um, I just think it, it's deprofessionalizing our industry. Really? Now, I'm not, you know, I'm not one of these snobs that thinks we should all be in shirts and ties or anything like that. I, I'm jeans and T-shirt kind of guy. Doesn't bother me. I'm not formal in any way, but I do think this is taking it too far. Um, but yeah, I just like I'm not really sure what the underlining message is meant to be. That a business owner goes, "I saw some chickens on TV. I'm going to get QuickBooks." Um, you know that. Yes, that's the pain point I have: is chickens coming into my cafe 
<laughs> and wanting their money. I'll have to get QuickBooks. That will solve that problem. Um, so yeah, it's yeah. I'm I'm not impressed. Can we tell? I can tell indeed. Now my my take on that the bit that confused or not confused, but the bit that kind of gets me to um, kind of talk about this a little bit more, or, or at least like look at it in a bit more positive light, is if we compare this to the last one that they did where um for anyone who can't remember the last one it was the talking people and the obnoxious sound that came on the, the hurt your ears and this this whole uh, oh, uh this whole um element to it that was um that was basically unneeded wasn't it and and also it was a really mixed message where it was telling people that quickbooks can get things done and you don't really need an accountant and and it, and and also telling people and and it was actually factually incorrect. I was telling people they could file all their taxes through QuickBooks, you know. So if you take it in comparison from what was released then to what's released now, we are massively improved and massively, um, like, uh, well, there's actual factual elements to it than was before. So there's a marked improvement, maybe not enough, but if you compare it just to uh, what was released now and what was uh, released then, then okay, we not hit the mark maybe, but at least we got in a much better position than we were back then. Is that fair to say? Yeah, I mean, it's not making any false alleg- uh, false claims this time. That is a bonus, don't get me wrong. But again, it's not involving that accounting community. Like, there's no reference to their pro advisor listings. There's no reference to working alongside an accountant with this tool. Mm. Like, yeah whether there needs to be in credit control i don't know it's certainly not a service we get a huge amount of requests for from small businesses um but yeah it's yeah it's interesting some interesting comments coming in as well so we've got a comment from sarah hunt saying not aimed at vegan accountants and business owners then uh i hope it's at least got a good soundtrack given i've not heard it yet i can't say it has it's not catchy put it that way I've not got the soundtrack going through my mind all the time. Um, shame the ad tagline doesn't reference anything to do with eggs, breakfast, or chickens. I mean, we've brought more puns to the table than their ad did, didn't we? And- <laughs> we have. <laughs> yep. Because um, this one's about get connected, get QuickBooks. Um, yeah. Is that that was the ad, the tagline uh, at the bottom? That wasn't the slogan, but yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. 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 I think it's get powered um, by QuickBooks, wasn't it? Uh, get yeah. peace of mind, get QuickBooks. Yeah, and there's a radio advert going around now just as well called... Uh... Oh, I've now forgotten what the tagline was. I had it a second ago. Um, but, yeah, like, there's a few of these similar t- taglines that just seem to imply getting this one bit of software is going to solve it all. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Paul says it reminds him of the Zero robot advert. Sometimes you can try to be funny and gimmicky too much. I mean, the fact we're talking about it, they've done something that it's at least memorable. I mean, they've irritated us further than the little people. I mean, Christ, that was a challenge. No, No, they haven't. There's no, I will never take the fact that they are, this is a worse advert or a worse approach than that. That, I mean, that bar was so low when it came to that last video that there is no way that this bar is, is any lower. Um, All right, same, higher maybe. <laughs> same place then. It's not worse. Oh. Um, but yeah, it's, and what's upsetting me is this is the first time we've seen it and we know this is going to be played for the next six months on every, t- but the benefit of Netflix is you, if you pay for the right subscription, you don't have to watch this stuff. We do know uh, that there are other videos on the same topic, though, don't we? And we do know that those yes. other videos have better, um, uh, well, just be- better imagery, shall we say? So yeah, yeah. They, they'll they'll be ones I think will be positive, better or at least or at least than, than the chicken one. So yeah, we'll see. Um, <laughs> yeah, but but yeah. I don't. I also don't think this is aimed at us as accountants us because it's a very mobile-esque oh yeah it's not aimed at us at all it's aimed at business owners yeah but it's giving a false facade that business owners can just need quickbooks the majority of them i would say need more than just quickbooks like quickbooks isn't going to explain to them how vat works like i'm dealing with a lot of cafes and restaurants at the moment are really struggling 
because their VAT rates have gone back up from the yeah. five and twelve and a half and whatever they've had, and all of a sudden their cut their food prices are going up, and they've increased their menu prices, but they've then not increased the amount they were charging for VAT because they've forgotten about it or whatever's happened. And yeah, that, there's just so much more to running a business than having a tool. It's a fantastic tool and it's a, a tool in your arsenal, but you need to know how to use it properly. Otherwise you're trying to hammer in a screw or screw in a nail or something like you're using the wrong tool for the job or you're not using the right tool in the right way. Um, so yeah, it's, it's not improved my impression of their approach to the direct customer at all. <laughs> uh, I, yeah. I, again, I just feel like we're, we're better than we were. The bar is a little bit higher. We're not there yet, but we're going in the right, 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 um, right, uh, way. I, yeah. I, I was surprised that you're so anti it. I thought you'd be at least a mark to a little bit more, but yeah, no, I, I, I can see what, I can see the points you made. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm just no. <laughs> fair play, fair play. Um, but again, at least we haven't got the uh, what, and I don't think there's any social push for this one. At least the worst part about the last one was not only was it actually incorrect and horrible sound and it burst and offensive to both your eardrums and your eyes, but there was also that social campaign around it as well, where you were trying to like use the music to do a TikTok dance or whatever it was that they were trying to push with it. And that, yeah, that was, I mean, just, yeah. Let's see what good. comes out this week. <laughs> <laughs> There's who a challenge knows? for everyone who's listening. Let's see who can get the first TikTok video relating to dressing up as a chicken and going into a cafe. Tell them they or should be. You can juggle the most eggs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So we will see. We'll see which came first, chicken or the egg. That's what, uh, that's what the videos will be around. So, yeah, and that's it, I think. I think that's uh, today's uh, set, um, webinar podcast all done and dusted. As you know, the best way to get in touch with us, I'm going to stick it in the comments section now, is if you do have a question, use the link. We do have a couple of questions in there, but we'll save them for next time, as uh, I'm sure everyone's ready to get back to their busy season or busy last mm -hmm. couple of days, last hours. So we do hope everyone has a very good last couple of hours, just so it's all done and dusted. Um, you know, any kind of things you want to push, push talk about anything you've got planned for this week that people should be aware of no um, obviously self-assessment tax return tomorrow if anyone wasn't oh, aware really? <laughs> yeah we might need to get that done um but yeah and i'm i'm doing a live demo for a facebook group of client engager on friday we've got over 80 people subscribed for that one already um so yeah no pressure on me but if this goes wrong it's on me <laughs> um but yeah no i'm just cracking on as per you normal uh looking forward to that pressure as of tomorrow being gone and we can have a bit of time of reflection and look back on things maybe do some vat returns you know a bit of var variety is the spice of life isn't it so <laughs> um i suppose i ought to check if there's any end of year uh, accounts due by the 31st of january i don't think there is i think we're miles ahead but i better check <laughs> Yeah, well, that's yeah, at least you've got a good tool to help you with that one. So, yeah, Client Engager will, will help you make sure those are done and dusted. Um, for me, it is just getting that tax return done and dusted, finished, and maybe even because I, you know, as most accountants think out there, we did work the whole of the weekend. So nice to have a bit of a bit of a downtime. It'll be nice to kind of uh, get back to a bit of normality. So, but like Johan's already said, the most important thing is to learn from these mistakes this year. That's certainly what we'll be doing. Um, and we'll be looking at uh, improving our prospects for next time. So, yeah, it's all good. Thank you, for everyone, for chatting in the chat. We've had some really good points being made, and that's exactly what this is all about. Um, and thank you for everyone who's put in questions as well. So remember, if you do have any questions, use the link. Make sure you put it through there. Don't forget that we'll be live on podcast services of your choice on Wednesday. So and if you are listening on the podcast, why not join us live 8.30 a.m. on a Monday morning where we're here for your listening pleasure so that's it from myself and johan today so it's a goodbye from me and goodbye from me wonderful and we'll see you all in a week's time Bye. see you next